welcome back. Commercial dairy farming has become a thing especially in the 20th century. Dairy milk accounts for 70% of the total national milk output. Farmers still face the challenges owing to the negative environmental impacts of the dairy production, especially with the long dry spells of drought, the weak monitoring on market and heavy amount of unprocessed milk going to waste. The challenge uh, that we face in dairy farming will always be feeding because the cows will always want more feed. And then the feed right now is very expensive. So the main problem that you are facing as at now is feeding, getting the feed. Occasionally we face uh, ECF but we manage them. Rarely do we get ECF because uh, uh, the cows don't leave these enclosures. And then uh, we uh, spray them every two weeks, keep the disease at bay. As a young dairy farmer, Brian is able to employ other young people who help him in his daily dairy activities. With a tour on his farm, Brian takes us through what he does on a daily basis and how he is able to manage his herd on an open field grazing method. So this is the feeding area. There are, oh, these are fresh young cows. Eh? Uh, as, uh, the cows are waiting for some more feed, they are licking the salt over there. They are basically docile cows, they are friendly, at least most of them. So these tags, are we, we tag them so that we are able to identify them. Like uh, this cow belonged to my grandfather, so it has been tagged 118, grandfather. Another one belongs to my brother, this one, Jordan, it's been tagged 121, and uh, well, every cow has its own tag for identification. For purposes of uh, actually knowing the performance of the cow, after uh, every day uh, after milking, we come and uh, look at the record and see how the cow has performed, whether it has it dropped, why has it dropped, then uh, identify problems that could have caused it to drop. Yeah. Uh, maybe the feeding regime, we can change the feeding regime and see whether the production goes up. Uh, right now we are just using silage and uh, the dry matter bomber roads. Sometimes the cows react to it because uh, uh, the, 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 maybe the, the feed may not be that nutritious for the cow. The cow will, the milk will drop. So we also have to take that into consideration when planning for feeds. Now we have uh, the highest producing cow gives us 15 liters. It has dropped. We it used to give us about 20 to 25 liters. Production has dropped at least. Uh, Right now, we'll be having a problem with the feeds. Like this, uh, we buy it locally. For the maize stocks, uh, we buy locally. And then we crush it and give it to the cows. But this one has not yet been silaged. Like this one, is uh, because that we brought it when it, is, uh, it was already dry. But it normally doesn't waste this way. When you crush it, when it is still green, it may not waste this way. So we uh, silage is when we are the car the, the maize stalks. We crush the maize stalks when they are still green and put them in a tank or something, a silage tube, for about one or two weeks. Ferment. It, is, it will be more nutritious for the cow. But this one is just uh, when, when we give them this way, we tend to put more more of the of the unga so that the cow will, uh, it will have the aroma so that the cow will just eat. We just do uh, boma roads and uh, silage, but uh, sometimes we actually buy the Luzan. Silage does better because it is more nutritious for the cow, but uh, we will not get silage throughout the year because uh, silage comes from maize and maize is not grown throughout the year. So we sometimes use uh, 
sometimes use bomber rods together with concentrates like the maize bran, the wheat bran, mix it, give it to the cows. It will work as good as silage. If you do dairy, cow, uh, dairy farming, because uh, you just need milk for just, uh, you will go wrong when you don't make it commercial, when it is just uh, for the family. But uh, I think if you take dairy farming positively and uh, make it your job, then I think you'll, uh, you'll be successful. So this is the milking parlor. This is where we do the milking. We do milking using a milking machine. Right now we have dismantled it because we are done with the milking. Uh, the cow comes inside here, give it a few, ma a few grains, maize bran. Then um, we do the milking. Once you're done with the milking, we wait. The weigh scale has been taken. We weigh the, the milk to, to know the, the, the weight of the milk. We disinfect using this to control mastitis from spreading. Yeah. So we can milk two cows at a time. You can use a machine here to manual milking on this side and the cows are so that to, the, the speed goes up. But uh, we are soon going to bring a, a, a milking machine that can milk two cows so that we do full milking. Right now they are preparing the, the feeds. Uh, this is a, a silage, uh, oh no, this is a chaff cutter. We are crushing the boma rods. We, we store them in sacks for feeding the cows. This one is uh, the maize stocks that we are crushing. It. We, we had crushed it yesterday. We are going to feed the cows with it today. We have not mixed it with anything. Once we have uh, put it in the Given it to the cows, we are going to sprinkle some some unga on top of it, and the cows will eat it. Yeah. But uh, uh, we can as well silage it, like as you can see over there. Silage, uh, silage is much better, more nutritious for the cows. So once you have crushed it and uh, put it on this drum for fermentation, it will be more nutritious. Fermentation will occur in the absence of oxygen, so that's why we, we put it on this drum and uh, cover it with a polythene so that uh, the air doesn't get inside. Then it is ready for the cows well, after probably three to four days, even one week. The dry spell is the most important phase of a dairy cow's lactation cycle. During this phase, a cow and her udder are prepared for the next lactation, hence any abnormalities during the dry period will have a negative effect on cow's health and milk production after calving. Good nutrition and management in the dry period have proven to minimize calving problems and early lactation metabolic disorder, maximize subsequent lactation performance and udder health and optimize fertility. For a dry cow to calf down, it takes a minimum of six weeks and a maximum of eight weeks. A dry cow is a cow that has been on milk and uh, uh, we've stopped milking and heifers are there. Just calves that have grown, grown bigger and uh, uh, they are yet to calf down. So right now we are feeding them with the, the maize stocks. Management of uh, dry cows is, uh, is also a process. Uh, uh, control, controlling diseases, um, feeding them pro uh, properly, giving them uh, minerals. You can see there's a mineral over there, mineral over there. We separate them because the, for purposes of feeding and uh, management because uh, the, the feeding regime for, 
dry cows will be different from cows on milk. We'll tend to give uh, the cows on milk uh, feed that is more nutritious because they are the ones who are producing milk. Uh, but these the heifers will give them uh, a feeding regime that fits their, 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 their status as that now. But uh, when they are about to calve down, we'll take them down there where the milking cows are, and then we steam them for probably two to three months before they calve down. After the cow calves down, we'll, uh, it should come on it probably in one or two, two to three months. Then uh, for another eight months to nine months, we'll calve down. So, so management uh, of the cow it begins from two months to the time it calves down. We start uh, start uh, steaming the cow, in preparation for it to calve down. What serving system does Brian use on his farm to increase his herd? We do purely artificial insemination. Uh, we don't do bull, just do artificial insemination. And we have been doing it for the last 10 years. At least my dad has been doing it for us. Um, and I can say that uh, the breeds keep on improving with time. Artificial insemination, the production of milk, and the resistance to diseases, uh, there is an improvement there, significant improvement with the artificial insemination as opposed to bull. Yeah. We are taking a short commercial break, but we will be right back with more. <laughs> 